If you suspect that you've been exposed to a moldy environment, you are feeling toxic and sluggish, you're reacting to anything you put in your mouth, you're reacting to your environment, then this video is for you. We are going to be talking about mycotoxin detox approaches using common binders that I frequently recommend to my patients here in the Byron Herbalist Clinic. So let's get into it. Today we're going to be talking about mycotoxins. These are extremely potently toxic byproducts of mold, whether you have been exposed to mold in an environment, whether you have mold growing in the gut, got a video on treating that successfully here. The mycotoxins, again, are a byproduct and they can suppress your immune function, they can be carcinogenic, they can be toxic to the kidneys, to the liver, to the brain. They're just really not things that you want in your body. And the big piece here is that some patients, most patients, have a lot of trouble eliminating them from the body naturally. We do need to support that process with binders and a few other pieces, we might save that for a different video, to really get a good detox protocol on board to get you to feel better. So mycotoxins, they get detoxed and excreted through different ways in the body. And where we can really intervene uh, are in the mycotoxins that are getting detoxed through the bile into the digestive tract. Normally they would get reabsorbed at the end of the small bowel with the bile, retoxifying the body and bringing on selective tailored binders to you and your tolerance and the mold you were exposed to, you know, the mycotoxins you have in your body can help to bind to these mycotoxins while they're in your digestive tract and eliminate them out the bowel successfully. Just a little disclaimer, most mold affected patients are incredibly hypersensitive. Maybe they're dealing with histamine intolerance, mast cell activation, that kind of goes hand in hand. Maybe they're dealing with chronic inflammatory response syndrome. Um, you know, they're reacting to things they eat, they're reacting to their environment. So working with a really skilled practitioner is a must and they can really hold your hand through this sometimes touchy process of getting things in you that would cure you without having you reacting and rejecting the products. So two common prescription binders would be Wellcol and cholestyramine. Normally these are recommended to patients with high cholesterol, not so much mycotoxins, that's kind of a, uh, an off script recommendation. And the reason they are used for high cholesterol is because that both of these binders bind to bile acids and you eliminate up to 10 times the amount of bile in your bowel movements. Normally bile gets reabsorbed in the small bowel. It's a very precious commodity. The body wants to preserve this, uh, this resource. And as you're eliminating an, an excessive amount of bile acids, the body takes cholesterol and converts it into bile acids through 7-alpha hydroxylase. That's the enzyme. The less bile, that's getting reabsorbed into the body, the more that enzyme is gonna to work to convert cholesterol to bile acids, thus lowering cholesterol. Now, both of these binders, they have a good affinity to ochratoxin A. It's a really common, common mycotoxin, the most common mycotoxin, and it is produced by aspergillus and penicillium. It's immunosuppressive, it's carcinogenic, it's toxic to the kidneys, it's toxic to the brain. It's definitely something that you want to be eliminating out of your body. On to more natural binders. You're probably not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. Some of my patients have a lot of trouble getting these binders. Again, I find that prescription binders can be a really big benefit maybe not improve symptoms, maybe cause symptoms. That's a pretty common theme with uh, mold affected patients. The most common natural binder that I'll recommend is activated charcoal. Activated charcoal has a really, really broad affinity for different mycotoxins, which makes it very valuable, really valuable binder to have on board. The mycotoxins that it will bind to would be ochratoxin, aflatoxin, stigmatocystins, and trichothecenes. Again, pretty broad spectrum, pretty uh, versatile binder. Um, in my practice, clinically, I have seen good, impressive benefit and gaining that momentum and improvement in mold patients when they onboard activated charcoal. And the really, really big caveat here is that activated charcoal can be quite constipating. 
Most mold patients are already constipated. Most of them have slow gut motility. You can check out how to track your gut motility here in this video. And if you're bringing in activated charcoal, you're becoming more constipated, bowel movements are not happening on a daily basis, that is not a right binder for you at this juncture. Clays. Clays are the second most common and the most popular binders that people are familiar with. Bentonite clay is probably one that you've heard of before. These are really common in cosmetics and they're actually really common in animal feed to adsorb to the mycotoxins in spoiled feed. We do have a lot of literature here in uh, mycotoxin and in animals. The clays, they have a similar impact on the gut as they do in animal feed. So there's some good kind of cross references that we can draw from there. If we're talking about bentonite clay, which would be my preference, it has an affinity for different mycotoxins, quite broad, similar to activated charcoal, and those ones would be aflatoxins, gliotoxins, sterigmatocystins, trichothecenes, and xeralinones. Again, pretty broad spectrum. Gliotoxin, that's an interesting one. This is a potent, potent immunosuppressive mycotoxin, and it is produced commonly by aspergillus and possibly candida. The research is a little bit mixed here, so I haven't quite made my mind up. And again, I don't think it's uh, conclusive yet. If we're talking clinically, I have seen impressive improvements when patients onboard bentonite clay. It can be very easy to get your hands on. You can get it in a powder, so you can start with micro doses if you are extra sensitive. Doesn't tend to be as constipating as activated charcoal, but you might be unique there. It might slow things down, which means take it easy or, or stop, get the bowel movements going and then bring it back in. And the really, really big piece with bentonite clay is to make sure that it is a clean clay. Zeolite. Zeolite's another clay-like mineral binder. Again, hit or miss. Some patients really respond well to it. Some patients really react to it. The research is definitely mixed. I use certain references that will indicate that uh, zeolite only binds to kind of one or two different mycotoxins. And the big piece here is that it has to be high quality. So work with a well-known brand, a supplement. Don't just buy a random zeolite off the shelf or on eBay or on Amazon. There's a little bit of concern out there in the blogosphere around the aluminium content of zeolite. And currently it's my understanding that the amount of silica that's actually in the uh, zeolite is going to bind to that natural aluminium in the product and it's not gonna get absorbed into your body. When would I use zeolite? I would use zeolite when someone is more constipated, it tends to be less constipating than other binders, although you might be unique there. And the other big thing is I would use zeolite if someone is extra sensitive. If you react to zeolite, you're reacting to zeolite. If you're reacting to a combo product, which we're gonna be talking about later in the video, then we don't know what you're reacting to and we might just be throwing out all these possible binders that we could use to get you better because you've reacted to a combo product. So what about chlorella? I can almost see the comments below this video now. Chlorella is a freshwater algae. You can get it in a liquid, you can get it in a powder, you can get it in capsules. It's potently alkalizing, which is a huge, huge benefit with mycotoxins. And it's considered a bit of a superfood. It's high in fiber, it's high in vitamins, it's high in protein. It's a, it's a bit of an all-rounder. It is very gentle. That's when I would be considering chlorella. Some mycotoxin patients and mold-affected patients are hyper reactive and some are extremely depleted because they have been limiting the amount of foods. I react to that, it's out. I react to that food, it's out. And you know, the uh, laws of diminishing returns are kicking in and they're kind of wasting away. That, that, that can be a pretty common presentation for a mold affected person. Chlorella, it can be a beautiful addition if there's any suspicion about heavy metals, if there's any suspicion about mold, which we're talking today, 
and if someone needs a good boost on the nutrient side of things again you can mix it in food you can mix it in smoothies you can start with a really low dose to make sure it's tolerated much like clay you have to make sure that your chlorella is clean there are some contaminated chlorellas on the market so again work with a really high quality supplement brand moving on to fiber the unsung hero of detox products so fiber it can help to bulk it can help to hydrate it can help to move those bowel movements which is essential and the insoluble fibers the big ones here that i would be considering and recommending would be things like flaxseed number one chia seed number two so hydrating so lubricating beautiful insoluble soluble fiber combos maybe psyllium husk that can be a little bit constipating it can be very dehydrating and hemp seeds that would be another form of fiber the reason why i love fibers and those different foods that i just recommended is because they're foods we can bring them into our daily routine and we can stop kind of popping all these different pills supplement fatigue it's a real problem and people kind of burn out and they run out of that um, willpower to push them through on the detox journey. A little daily smoothie, you can mix in your chlorella, maybe a bit of bentonite clay, one or two different fibers, maybe some blueberries with all their beautiful polyphenol antioxidants, perfect. Tastes good, you're detoxing and you just keep that up to get that momentum and get you out of the woods. So before we move on, let's just take a little break. I know it can be a bit overwhelming. I just wanted to thank you guys for being here and for following along. And if you're getting anything out of this, then definitely be sure to like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, tell me what you like, tell me what you wanna hear about. And that really motivates me to make more videos to help you guys. So far we've covered natural binders. I'm sure you're familiar with most of them, if not all of them. But did you know that probiotics are also potent mycotoxin binders? Specifically here we're talking about lactobacillus, um, different species, and the other side of the coin would be Saccharomyces. So Cerveciae and Boulardii, those are potent mycotoxin binders. They're also potent antifungal agents. They're beneficial yeasts in the body they don't stick around they move through but as they're moving through they exhibit quite a potent antifungal action on any resident mold or even candida that's taken up residence l pentosis and l brevaris they can bind to aflatoxins l plantarum works to bind aflatoxins and also upregulates your inbuilt antioxidant system and it's also been shown to bind to the common mycotoxin stereogmatocystin on the saccharomyces side of things We've got Saccharomyces cerevisiae that binds to aflatoxins, ochratoxins, and zeoralanone. And on the Saccharomyces boulardii side, I would be considering that more as a potent antifungal agent, again, for mold or fungal overgrowth that have taken up residence in the body. Clinical note here, I would be cautious around probiotic supplementation with the hypersensitive side of the mold-affected patients. If you're reacting to everything, I'd be a bit cautious around lactobacillus strains um, and species. Um, Saccharomyces boulardii, I would take it low and slow, bring it in, you know, first, definitely before the kind of lactobacilli bifido blends. Um, patients tend to be less reactive, but the hypersensitive patients, I would be starting with uh, less kind of gut remodeling approaches, much more gentle, much more regulating, and then bring these in halfway through or on the tail end of a good strong detox protocol. Humic and fulvic acid, what are they? They're beginning a heap of attention, heap of press. There are a bunch of big brands, a big supplement company, detox combo products that have included humic and fulvic acid in their, uh, in their makeup. They are the end stage of organic matter decomposition. They add humic and fulvic acid to soil additives. They boost crop growth and they have a concentrated amount of nutrients in it. So definitely a plus. You might think about that in a similar way as chlorella, but it's a little bit more inert, right? It's not actually like a freshwater algae like chlorella. 
Um, humic acid is a great biotoxin binder. Um, it's also a potent anti-inflammatory agent. And I have no problem with these being in combo products. I probably wouldn't start with these unless someone was hypersensitive. Similar to my thinking around zeolite, you know, if we are concerned that a patient's gonna react to everything we give to them, they're reacting to probiotics, they're becoming constipated on charcoal, things just are going the wrong way. We're trying to chip away at this problem and we just keep getting symptom flares or regressions, quite stagnant. I might consider a humic and fulvic acid, one, the other, a combo, just to start that process and take a little bit of that um, stress off the body, get a little bit of momentum, and then we can bring in some more reactive products once they're a little bit more stable. So the last little piece, and I think this is gonna be really valuable for anyone that's made it this far, I know it can be a little bit overwhelming, <laughs> I totally get that, um, would be combo products. And I have been using combo products more and more. I see great, great value in multiple binders in one capsule, strong, effective, easy that's a huge piece you know patients are overwhelmed if they have to take 5 10 15 supplements they're not going to get there it's going to be too expensive they're going to get supplement fatigue they're going to burn out and they're not going to get better so combo products makes things easier i would not start with a combo product unless a moldy patient was resilient and vital which is very uncommon but I would definitely bring it in and I'd trial it, maybe a sample. Take five capsules over the next week. How do you feel? Super constipated. I feel terrible. Okay, I'm bring you back to those single intervention binders. I feel great. It's tolerated. Let's keep going. Buy a bottle. So I wanted to show you these guys. Not everyone's gonna tolerate every combo product and not every combo product is going to be helpful for you. It really depends on you as a person, as an individual. Protocols don't work. It's you, how you feel, how you tolerate it, and then maintaining that, changing it up after one month, two months, three months onto a different binder to get you out of the woods and to get you better. So this one right here, I really like Research Nutritionals. I have kind of fallen in love with a handful of their different products. They have great, great, great combo products. They're really, really well researched and they're very, very clean as well. You know, no GMOs. I love it how they're really kind of emphasizing that right up front. That's so important. If we're looking at the different ingredients here, activated charcoal, you know, pure bind, that's just their kind of trademarked activated charcoal. Humic acid and fulvic acid, you know, we talked about those being a really good addition. G pure, this is a type of zeolite. And again, purified zeolite, nice and clean, good balance between the silica and the aluminium. Kytosan, we didn't get a chance to chat about Kytosan. I don't have a whole lot of experience with Kytosan on its own. Kytosan does have a really good binding affinity for mycotoxins. Might do a little update on this video later on. And then we've also got more silica. So we're kind of doubling down on that zeolite. And maybe that's to offset a bit of that aluminium in the, uh, in the zeolite, I'm not sure. So moving on to toxin pull, again from Research Nutritionals, they are really recommending this one for heavy metals and glyphosate. I do find that there are some patients that are affected by multiple different toxins, biotoxins, heavy metals, mold byproducts, glyphosate, environmental exposure to chemicals, depends on what they were doing. I do like toxin pull. I find it a little bit more gentle than mycopole. It's not quite as constipating. And if we're having a little look at how this uh, varies here, we've got the fulvic acid, which we talked about. We've got the humic acid, um, cilantro, so that's coriander, that's very specific for heavy metals. Silica, that's a big one. Chlorella, so there's a bit of an overlap on the mycotoxin side of things. And then the other really big piece here, taurine, dandelion root, bit of quercetin and a bit of vitamin C. So it can kind of really stabilize a reactive patient. 
bit of a histamine kind of stabilizing, mast cell stabilizing, and also mobilizing that bile from the gallbladder. We really need to get all of these toxins mobile to actually bind to them in the bowels. Patients can be very stuck, very stagnant, very sluggish, things aren't moving, and really getting in there with herbs and nutrients like taurine that can help move the bile to then bind to the mycotoxins in the bowel. Moving on to Ultra Binder from Quicksilver. I love Quicksilver. I think they do good work, really clean. They can be a little bit expensive, so sometimes you have to have deeper pockets for these products. And if we're looking at the ingredients here, it is a little bit similar to the Mycopole. We've got the um, you know, acacia fiber that's more of a uh, prebiotic kind of fiber. We've got the zeolite. We've got bentonite clay, so that's unique to this one. Activated charcoal, chitazan, aloe vera that can help kind of soften and lubricate the bowels and a little bit of silica as well. Again, this is a good product. I have seen some fantastic improvements on Ultra Binder from Quicksilver. No affiliation with these products. Moving on to Cellcore. I originally didn't pay these guys much attention. They have a really strong kind of marketing team and everything is a little bit kind of too souped up for me, but changed my mind because patients were coming to me on Cellcore products, seeing the improvements and you can't be too stuck in your ways. If patients are seeing improvements on products and you get enough of that data coming in, you have to keep your ears open and I am totally happy to and willing to change my mind at any point and that really depends on people getting better. That's the name of the game. That's what we're trying to do here. That is our number one priority. That's our only priority. Our patients improving, they're improving on cell core products, bring in cell core products. It's not rocket science. So if we're looking here, the big one with biotoxin binders, where they really kind of start stand out, we've got the humic acid, we've got broccoli sprout. Again, that can be an NRF2 upregulator. I don't really start with NRF2 upregulators initially, and that's because I'm concerned that the mycotoxins are going to downregulate or block the ability for those enzymes to switch on to kind of upregulate your endogenous antioxidants, superoxide dismutase, um, glutathione, again, um, sulforaphane and broccoli sprout and rosemary, good to bring them in on the other side, but I think we need to kind of eliminate the mycotoxins first. Um, molybdenum, it's got the fulvic acid. They're big on the fulvic and the humic acids, some polysaccharides. Again, I would bring this one in. This one's gentle. If patients uh, have a little look here and they think they can tolerate these products, I say, look, bring it in. But where I really see strong, strong, strong mycotoxin detox, sometimes pretty strong kind of uh, reactions because they're mobilizing so many different mycotoxins would be this product right here. This is kind of their stand out binder carboxy. And uh, again, starting off really low and really slow, I think you can ramp them up to really strong doses, humic, fulvic, and citric acid. You know, if you're reacting to this one, you know, there's, you're reacting to one of these three. It's not a complicated, uh, not a complicated product. Strong, strong binder. Again, this one's pretty basic. So similar to something like zeolite, activated charcoal, bentonite clay, I would be comfortable with someone starting with this product, starting off nice and low, building it up over time. But um, you know, my concern here is it can be a little bit expensive as well. Similar to the Quicksilver products, uh, you know, it can definitely run up the price tag. So additions to binding, you know, if we're talking about mold exposed patients, if we know you have mycotoxins in your body, we've tested your urine, we might have done an organic acid test, there's more on that here. There's either mold growing in your gut, you have been exposed and you have mycotoxins, we have a number you know, in the urine of your exposure kind of amount, then binders for me where I sit are a must. Could be something as simple as the fiber, the insoluble fiber that can do it for some patients. Sometimes you have to ramp it up to more of an expensive combo product and just work with that for a little bit longer. There are nutrients and there are herbs 
and there are lifestyle and dietary practices that I would recommend as well. I'm gonna save that for a future video, but the two really big ones that I would be focusing on here would be glutathione, and I would also be focusing on mobilizing those detox channels. We talked about the bowel movement, so important to be having a bowel movement every day deals off. If you're not having a bowel movement every day, just forget about detoxing, so bowel movements, but then getting a little bit more into the mix would be things like mobilizing bile from the liver to the gallbladder to the small bowel. Get all that pumping. You know, bitter herbs, they can be really helpful there. Um, there's some nutrients as well that can kind of thin the bile and get that bile kind of um, dumping into the small bowel. And then the other really big piece here would be lymph flow. Again, you've got some diet and lifestyle things you can do there, and you've got some really, really potent lymphagog herbs. Save that for a future video, so stay tuned. If you liked it, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in a different video.